Hi guys, so welcome to part two of this Riverbed Steel Central Eternity Overview. So this session will be focused around demonstrating the interface and touching on features that you'll find compelling for the services that you provide to your customers. So when logging into the console for the first time, I'm presented with the Enterprise Application Summary. This is a great place to start seeing information regarding the overall health and performance across the entire enterprise. I can see here that over the past week, there are a total of 62 users using 67 different devices and utilizing 30 applications with an average time of 36 hours per user. So for IT operations, this view is very useful because we can see not only which applications are installed, but what end users are actually utilizing and importantly, their experience using them. This includes all Windows and web applications, regardless of whether they're internal or cloud-based, running on all the monitored devices without any prior configuration. This not only includes known and approved applications, but also potential shadow IT applications that have been installed by the end users themselves. This is also great for comparing usage of licensed applications and whether these are being underutilized with the benefit of reducing license costs, or maybe even exceeding limits, which put the business at risk of an audit failure. We can also break this down further by looking at environmental data like department or location, which are also automatically discovered by Eternity. So scrolling down further, we can see usage trends for applications and also the numbers of users online at any given time. Very useful for helping diagnose if user concurrency could be affecting your services. So scrolling back up, the user experience index, or the UXI as we call it, is the performance and health of an application or web page. This is rated 0 through to 5, with 5 being the highest performing and the most stable. Essentially, any crashes, hangs or errors of an application will lower the score as a result. The UXI score across the top here is an average of all applications in use across the entire enterprise. Each application is then separated out below in the applications fields with their own individual UXI score. So this information is great for IT in understanding which applications are the most unstable and maybe require new patches or updates to help stabilise them further. The activity score here is where Eternity really differentiates itself from other vendors because we can now look at the performance of applications in terms of business activity response times. Activity scores are rated 0 through to 100 and they are made up of a combination of client time, network time and server time. The scores are baselined using data over a number of days from the initial deployment which determines what normal performance is. Independent baselines are created across multiple devices, locations and other environmental factors as these can all affect the response time of an activity. Because we have a baseline for a given user or location, any deviation then will be give colour-coded scores depending on how large the deviation is. A green score indicates normal performance, an amber score would indicate a moderate deviation, which might be noticeable to an end user. A red score being a large deviation and you would expect user complaints due to either a loss of service or very slow response times. So let's see how Eternity can be used in the context of a support desk agent. In this scenario, a user, Adam Covert, who is in the sales team, has logged a ticket complaining of poor performance when searching for an account in SAP. The agent can quickly go to the Troubleshoot user device dashboard and search for the end user. This would also show a list of all the devices the user has logged on to recently, which can be invaluable when trying to determine maybe the last virtual desktop used in a non-persistent environment. Here the user has said that it's their laptop they're experiencing issues with. Now we can see all the device details related to Adam's laptop, from how the laptop connects, in this instance connecting via Wi-Fi, and also even the signal strength. We know the operating system is Windows 10, the last boot time, the business location, the manufacturer and the model. We also have the Windows Stability Index, which in this case is fairly low, indicating potential problems with the device. Importantly, all this data is up to date within the last few minutes, and we also have historical data going back a week. This reduces the need to remote into a desktop or grab logs or further information, causing more frustration for an end user. At the bottom I can see recent health events. Now there are a number of crashes relating to .NET affecting Outlook and also the WMI provider host and also even an issue with an overheating of the device. So while these issues aren't related to my SAP issue, I can add further value to my support service by making the end user aware that due to the potential overheat issue, it might be recommended to back up their data and to report to the local IT team to troubleshoot the device further or look maybe to replace it. Can also see any recently installed applications and also recent boot times as well. Under applications I can see the recently utilized applications on this device and I can also see the UXI is low for SAP and it does have a high amount of wait time in this particular instance. 
So by changing to the user experience dashboard, I'm now able to see performance data relating to applications affecting user experience on Adam's laptop. This helps validate Adam's SAP incident, as I can see here that the response time for SAP search account is amber, indicating a deviation from normal performance. To even validate this without using a tool like Eternity could have taken hours with stopwatch testing and numerous visits to the user's desk, causing further productivity loss. By filtering on the SAP application and highlighting the search account, then hovering over the recent poor response time, I can see that response time seems to be affected by high server time, indicating a potential issue outside of the environment. So now that I've ruled out the device, I can now look to find out what the root cause could be. If I now click Monitor on SAP, I can see the performance for all users who use SAP. This dashboard has been useful already, as I can see the performance has degraded specifically for users in the sales department for which Adam belongs. By selecting the sales department, I can now filter all the results below for that particular department. I can see the breakdown of monitored activities, with search accounts showing an amber for, with a low activity score. I've now gone from a single user issue to an issue affecting many users within the sales department. I can now highlight the search account and then navigate to the Troubleshoot dashboard. So there's four SAP servers listed below, with the East1 server highlighted with a red activity score. By highlighting the affected server, this also filters the affected business locations, which is useful again as it shows it's not just the Miami building affected, but also remote users. So this could really help support exclude a potential network problem at the Miami site. I now have enough evidence to go back to my service provider, SAP in this case, to escalate the problem accordingly. Importantly, I've managed to locate the root cause faster, helping to improve mean time to resolution. So I'm going to show you how a desktop transformation owner could use Eternity. Eternity has the ability to validate maybe an application change, infrastructure, configuration or even a physical to virtual migration. By comparing metrics of before and after, you can quickly determine if problems need addressing before they get rolled out across the enterprise. So for desktop transformation owners, if you are starting a Windows 7 to Windows 10 pilot, you can now monitor and compare performance. In this example, I can log on to my old Windows 7 machine and send a test email using Outlook 2013. I can then repeat the test on my shiny new Windows 10 machine and repeat using Office 2016. Back in the console, I can compare metrics for Windows 10 machines against Windows 7 by looking at the configuration change dashboard. Here I can select the type of change, the operating system name in this case, change it to Windows 10 and then select the change date and then click go. I can filter on Windows 7 and Windows 10 only. And then from this view I can see that overall across all applications that the UXI and activity responses are worse off as a whole. However Outlook, Project Tracker and Salesforce have seen a poor performance improvement. The applications with worse performance, in this case OneNote, Skype and TradeFast, should then be prioritised for investigation to determine what is affecting their response times. This could be anything from the hardware to maybe a driver, but at least it gives you an early heads up within the pilot phase to address these issues before the main rollout. So lastly, I want to show you how you can plan new IT initiatives to find out what applications are impacting user productivity and importantly how to prioritise them in terms of cost to the business. Within Analyze, I can view business activities. This view has been measured on performance breakdown with the poorly performing applications and their associated business activities located at the top. By changing the time frame to the past month, and then changing the measurement to cost analysis, I can now start to see lost productivity in terms of lost revenue. I can change the hourly rate according to the suit the average employee salary. This particular report shows that TradeFast and SAP are costing the business nearly $20,000 a month in lost productivity. 
Again, I can filter the breakdown data to meet your requirement. Here I can filter on device type and number of CPU cores. Now I have a comparison for all applications and activities with the poorest performing devices located at the top and the associated loss of productivity in dollars. So this can be quite compelling now for justifying new hardware spends or upgrades.